Appreciate you streaming on in here on Birds 365 with McMullen, McDonald, and Bo Wolf from The Athletic. Haven't had him on in the dog's age. Mr. Wolf, how you been? Doing all right. How are you guys? Uh, good. I see Bo all the time. But it's exciting yeah. to have him back on the program. And I guess we have to start with Jalen Hurts. I, you know, we just had uh, Dr. Jess Splin on talking about the injury. Uh, Bo, uh, you got us? I saw you mute. I saw you put your finger up. Oh, we lost Bo. All right, hopefully he comes back. I uh, wanted to ask Bo, you know, where he was on the Jalen Hurts part of it. Do you just completely sit him down? Why is he out there if he's not going to do much? Um, and here we go. We popped him back up. So talking about Jalen, Bo, you know, he was out there, but he was doing very little uh, on on Thursday's practice. Why put him out there? Why not, as Dr. Jess Blinn just told us, just rest him, dude. <laughs> why Why is he even out there? Well, I mean, I, what, you know, what, what from what we know of Jalen Hurts, do you think he would have, he, he would have wanted to rest? That's in any true. Capacity? I mentioned, I mean, you know, maybe it's a leadership thing. Maybe here's my just... question, John. Is, is Jalen Hurts the greatest healer there's ever been, this guy yeah. who can heal better than anybody else, or is he the toughest guy? that Nick Sirianni has ever coached. It can't be both, right? If he is healing, true. then he's not yes. playing through that much. That's but if point. he is so tough, then he hasn't healed yet. I thought that, you know, you bring that up. I thought Nick did a disservice to him with the healing nonsense. I really do. Because then people expect uh, something. I think he should have went the Lane Johnson route, which as you mentioned, he has done. I uh, talked about how tough he is. If he went that route... I think it 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 goes a little bit smoother, but yeah. Well, Nick will go through. <laughs> we lost Bo again. Hopefully, Nick will contradict himself, Jody. You know, I don't know five times in the same press conference over under. So maybe that's the the answer to that. Uh, but it is interesting, and and Bo is correct in the fact that you know which one is it, and I think he did a disservice with the healing part of it. Sorry about the uh, sorry about the mic. Yeah, I think I think I think he did a little bit. Yeah. Um, I I just this whole thing is so weird because it's so different than the way that they have handled any injury in the past. Um, like being so open about how difficult it is for him to play through. I just yeah, I'm I'm struggling to to fully make sense of it. Yeah, I Bo, uh, I need you to speculate a little bit here. Eagles are going to find out who they play on the weekend, and then. They'll be hosting either the Giants or the Seahawks or whoever's coming to town the next week. If we can all agree that their play calling last week against the Giants was not prototypical of what we saw from the Eagles all year and using Jalen Hurts the way they used him as successfully as they did to put him on an MVP type level. Is it just automatically back to what we did all season long because it's the playoffs? Will they start a certain way and depending on how the game's going, adjust to it? That Those all-important conversations had behind closed doors with Steichen and with uh, Sirianni and Hertz in or, in, a, in or out of that meeting. How is the game plan going to look like when it starts, whoever they face next week in the division around? Well, that's, that's the million-dollar question, and that is, like, if you think about why they might be so open about this, if there's some kind of, uh, you know, gamesmanship reason to it, I think this might be it to to make opposing teams think that, you know, we're going to be just as careful with Jalen as we were in week 18. He's not going to be as willing to take hits. He's going to have to be uh, a drop back passer who gets rid of the ball quickly. My, I am operating under the presumption that, that come the playoffs, knowing how tough Jalen Hurts is, they're going to do – exactly what they did in the regular season. And he is going to be willing to run the ball and he is going to will be willing to drop his shoulder and run into guys if he needs to. Um, I just, you know, that is when this offense is its best, obviously, you know, they're not going to be reckless with it, but I would be surprised if, you know, I'm expecting them to call a zone read on the second play of the game or something like that. Like, it'll be like Jalen hurts is here to play. This is the playoffs. Let's go. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, it, it even if they, you know, have a plan to somewhat limited 
Um, it is the playoffs, and you're going to see some of it. And I think doing it early in the game would indicate to the opposing defense, whatever, all right, we got to be concerned about him pulling the football. So I think you're right from that standpoint, Bo. But one of the other aspects to this is Lane Johnson. He's going to try to play through that uh, torn uh, adductor muscle, and he's an offensive lineman, and he needs his power. Um does it surprise you that the Eagles haven't at least entertained seemingly the thought of, hey, maybe we got to get Andre Dillard ready? And it might be everybody says move um, Jordan to the right side, put Andre at left tackle. Andre's played left guard. Maybe he's more open to being uh, a right tackle this time. Are you surprised it's not been broached it's seemingly? Well, here's my question. At what point have we ever seen Andre Dillard be a better player than Jack Driscoll? Fair, fair. More talented player. Although I would argue when when he played, what was it, that three-game stretch? He was fine. He was just as as cromulent as Jack Driscoll has been at right tackle. So I like it. Crumbly. I don't understand why you would upset the apple cart and, you know, Stylin doesn't want to move. Yeah, two he doesn't positions like moving parts. To fix yeah. one. Right. So why would you do that in service of a big question mark about whether that guy is even better than the guy who's been playing and has been doing OK? Now, mm-hmm. you mentioned earlier, Bo, that you think when that playoff game rolls around against whoever it's going to be, um, we'll know early on. Oh, no, this is the Philadelphia Eagles that you saw all year. This is what's coming your way. We're going to be ready to rock and roll on offense with Jalen Hurts being Jalen Hurts MVP type level. Will they be nervy enough to take the ball first? If the coin flip goes and the Eagles win, do they say, give us the football? We'll show you Jalen Hurts. Or do they just nah, nah, nah. to start the game? Yeah, nah, nah, the nah, analytics nah, nah. that oh, Jody better. wants that to happen so badly. It's I not do. happening, Jody. No, but you do have to. You, you remember that there are new playoff rules for overtime um, this year, and so there is an interesting decision if you if you get to overtime, yeah. do you take the ball first or not? Because if if you take the you ball better second, take the ball in overtime. You I don't know. Take. I don't know. There's ah. an argument to be made because if you give up a touchdown on the opening drive, you get a response. And that means that you then get four downs instead of three downs to work your way down the field. And you can make the decision to go for two and try to win the game. Good point. Good point. And that was an overreaction to what happened last year. I hate when the NFL does that, but I think I would go, I think I would go second. Yeah. You can make the argument that you want to know what you have to do. And especially with this defense. Uh, yeah, John, and that, that's not a knock against the defense, but the way that it, it is it is designed to force opposing teams to maintain drives. If they if if the opposing offense has four downs instead of three downs yeah. against this version of the defense, yeah, I think that's a, a like a, a a tinge of a concern. Sort of like a college type atmosphere of knowing what you need to accomplish. Uh, right. Yeah, it might be it might be the way to go, but they are not. They are deferring if they win the coin toss at yeah, the start of the game show. Yeah. Um, hey John, what is I, I know that you are uh, you're a wrestling guy. Yeah. A great promo by Lane Johnson. Uh a uh, tremendous promo. Which yeah. was so what is this belt? Uh the gold belt I they just give it to celebrities. And okay. People. And, and, like and the... WrestleMania is coming to uh Philadelphia next year at yes. Lincoln Financial Field. So Lane's a big wrestling fan and Lane's yes. going to be a big part of that. So it was a good promo. It was a solid promo. Very good yeah. promo. Yeah. yeah. Solid promo. And people got excited because maybe if again, Lane I mean, can do a promo like that. Why can't he play, Bo? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that was, that's, I th- he looked good on the side field yesterday, I thought. He but did. I mean, maybe, you know, he's made a lot of money, but if you can get that Saudi money, then all of a sudden. Oh, you know, yeah. Things. Oh, yeah. We, we could go down a wrestling a... wormhole here. I don't think we want to do that. <laughs> yeah. You're, uh, I could do six hours on this, Bo. All right, uh, Bo, we talked about uh, Jalen Hurts and what they will do with him, how they're going to call plays and the like. Uh, I think we could also agree that last week in their victory, albeit not overly impressive, but victory over the Giants, they didn't run the ball very effectively. That would be Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders. And we know Miles wore a brace all week in practice. He took it off for the game, but he didn't seem to have his usual burst. Certainly with Lane Johnson out of the lineup, it's not the same five up front that are looking to open those holes. 
How much concern do you have going into the game that they're going to play next week without knowing who the opponent is that Miles Sanders is not Miles Sanders right now? Um, I guess I'm not too concerned about Miles Sanders. I think that like the level that Miles Sanders is playing is like the third most important part of the running game being successful behind Jalen Hurts being Jalen Hurts and Lane Johnson being out there, right? Like if those guys, if Jalen Hurts is presenting the threat to the opposing defense and taking the attention away, and if Lane Johnson is out there, then, you know, Kenny Gainwell can have a fine game if, if Miles Sanders is not doing well. As long as he's protecting the ball, I think that's pretty much all they need. Um, but it has been curious the way that they have, like, consciously tried to, um, you know, not overwork Miles Sanders these past couple of weeks, these, these past couple of games. It's been noticeable. Yeah. Um, we have football this weekend, but the Eagles obviously can thankfully uh, rest up. Uh, not only Jalen Hurts, uh, Lane Johnson, but everybody's banged up this time of year, Bo. And uh, 12 other playoff teams have to fight mm -hmm. for their lives. The Eagles potentially have four opponents. I want you to to rate them, uh, uh, rank them from easiest to toughest potential divisional round matchup. Well, I think that the number one rooting interest is you want to play the Seahawks because that would mean that they've eliminated the 49ers, right? So they've taken away that the biggest true. threat. That would be, yes, yes. In the NFC. Um, so that's – and it's it's nice how it's set up for, for specifically for Eagles fans where you've got the seventh seed on Saturday. All right, if they don't do it, we got the sixth seed on Sunday. All right, if they don't do it, all right, we're going to play the winner of this Monday night game. So uh, the Seahawks, I think, would be your, your number one choice because they would eliminate the Niners and – because they'd be flying across the country for their second straight road game. It's a defense that can be had. Um, and the Eagles seem well suited with Darius Slay and James Bradbury to handle DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett on the outside. I think I would probably say the Giants number two, even though there is the finickiness of playing a team for a third time, playing a team that you just played two weeks ago. Uh, I just, you know, if you can't beat Daniel Jones at home, yeah. And a defense that's, you know, very bad, even though it is interesting because it blitzes a lot, then what are we doing here anyway? And then between the Cowboys and Bucks, I think I would rather see the Bucks. Um, I know it's Tom Brady. I know they've got a defense that could potentially turn things on. And Tom Brady is like specifically designed to like annoy this defense by just taking four yards at a time. But I don't I, – I, that Cowboys team it just has such a higher upside. Yeah. They're more explosive on <clears throat> offense. They're more dangerous on defense. I think they're liable to, you know, lay an egg in Tampa and lose by 10 points. But I would be much more nervous about that game than I would be about the Bucks. Yeah, I disagree with you on that one. I don't want any part of Tom Brady. Um, but let me let me uh, double down on the, the Seattle thing with you. I get it. If they pick off the 49ers for you, they did get solid because most of us feel the 49ers more than anybody else as a potential uh, hurdle for the Eagles to get over to get to the Super Bowl. But if they beat the 49ers, don't you have to give them their respect and their props and go, uh oh, if they took care of the 49ers on the road, now they're coming in here going to try to take care of us in Lincoln Financial Field. Don't they merit more consideration? If they actually pull this upset this week? Well, sure, but then by that by that argument, then why wouldn't you be worried about the Cowboys if they beat Tom Brady? No, Brady and uh, that that's before the game is played. <laughs> I said I'd rather play Brady before the game is played. If the game is played, once the game is played, you get to reevaluate. You get to okay. put them in a new yeah. order. But before yeah, the I game, just, I, I, just would, I would want to stay away from Brady. Over the course of the season, the Seahawks have been a fine team. I, you know, they get to play the Niners for a third time. Maybe Brock Purdy turns into a pumpkin in the playoffs. Maybe it's something like that. I just, you know, it it, it, it would be hard for me to um, imagine them beating the Niners in a way that would really make me fear them in the in the divisional round. Yeah, I'm surprised how much fear there is of the New York Giants. I don't know if you get it, Bo, but I get all this, oh, three times it's hard to beat a team. Not if the team stinks and you're really good. It's pretty easy. I want the bad team. Um, yeah, I think I, that that doesn't usually play out. Like if, if you look at the numbers, it's not that great. And also yeah. you have to think about it. If you're playing a, a team a third time, 
it means that that team is a playoff team. And so they're good enough. And so, yeah, it's hard to beat a good team three times, right? Yeah, but I don't I, think the I, Giants are a good team. No, I don't think they're a good team. It's funny, though. Everybody's picking them to beat the Vikings, which I could see. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that gives me pause because if everyone is thinking alike, somebody's not thinking. I li- I've always liked that 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 uh, little wor- words of wisdom. And, boy, everybody's on this Giants Sounds like a Zach Bermanism. Yeah. Well, maybe I got it from Zach. I don't even know who I got it from, but everybody's on that bandwagon. And I, 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 boy, I think that's the least talented team in the playoffs. I think Seattle's more talented than the Giants. Well, I mean, I guess if you take if, if like the the Ravens or the Dolphins without a quarterback. Well, well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with you. You know, yeah, I'm with way, you. I, I am not scared of the Giants at all. AFC versus NFC. I mean, you got it. Could you imagine if Lamar and Tua were playing that murderous yeah, row of quarterbacks versus the NFC level where it's Jalen, Tom, and then who are you going to pick, Dak or Kirk Cousins? I mean, Dak. Um, it, the level of quarterback play between the conferences. And the ages of the quarterbacks. Yeah. They're all young. The, I, so I want to talk about the sense of urgency, Bo. This team has set a franchise record for wins, so many franchise records. Top five offense, top five defense. We don't know if Shane Steichen's going to be here next year, Jonathan Gannon, even though a lot of fans would like the latter, Uh, even Brian Johnson. There's no guarantee this is going to happen again. With with all the free agents, they got to take advantage of this window, don't they? I mean, they have a clear, clear path to the Super Bowl. I totally agree. I think I think it is really overstated to be like this is the beginning of a window. Uh, you know, Jalen Hurts is is going to be uh, a superstar quarterback. We seem to have a good coach. You know, uh, AJ Brown and Devontae Smith are going to be here for a long time. All of that is true, but we just we just lived through this in 2017, yeah. right? Like things change. Remember in 2018. All we were talking about is how much better the roster was. New normal, was baby. New normal. Like, they were going to be the Patriots. Yeah, yeah, there are just all these different dynamics. Even if even if they get everybody back, which they're not going to, it's like, well, you've won now. And so maybe not everybody is as willing to give of themselves and sacrifice their roles. And there's a little bit more uh, complaining about things like that. There is absolutely no guarantee that they are going to be this good again. And as you say, they're never going to have a better chance than this one, given the uh, easiness, the weak relative weakness of the conference, given that you've got the home field advantage. Um, I, I think this is like such a golden opportunity. And I, I that's why I think like if they don't make the Super Bowl, I think it's a really big disappointment. New normal. One of the least well-advised quotes from Doug Peterson <laughs> ever. Um let me ask you about a specific guy. I expect him to play well this week because he's had a phenomenal season and we want that to be the case. And then we want him to be back with the Eagles again next year. Brandon Graham, where do you think he's at right now in his headspace? Yeah, it's interesting. So I did a story on The Athletic, which which you can read, uh, where I spent I spent game day for that Saints game, week 17, with Brandon Graham's wife in, in Brandon Graham's box. Um, nice. With his friends and family um, and – that was the game when he crossed the 10 sack threshold for the first time. Uh, so, you know, you know, a big celebration in the box. Uh, he, you know, he played more snaps than he has at any point this season because Josh Sweat got injured. He was like joking after the game about how tired he was. Um, and it was interesting sort of reflecting on his career with his wife, Carleen, uh, about, you know, every time he's been a free agent, they thought that they were leaving Philadelphia. You know, we remember in 2018, Brandon Graham like shook hands with all of us. Yeah, he uh, gave us all members, hugs, right? Man. Like this is, yeah. I'll see you guys. Like it's been a great ride. Um, and now he's one season away from tying Chuck Bednarik for the most seasons with the Eagles in franchise history, and it'll be it would be his 14th season, and he's playing at a high level. Um, I cannot imagine him playing for a different team at this point, um, and so I think if he returns, it will be with the Eagles. And I think that's – and usually I am, like, anti-sentimentality for uh, guys on the roster, and I think that that has been an issue for the Eagles in the past. But Brandon Graham's not coming back to, you know, demand playing time. 
he would be coming back to be again another third or fourth edge rusher, a rotational player. He's, you know, he is such a, a light um, and like energy lifter in the locker room. Um, I think if he wants to play, they should welcome him back and he will be back. You know, I could see, you know, they, they go and win the Super Bowl or they make the Super Bowl. He's, he decides to call it quits. You know, um, he and his wife have talked very um, uh, intentionally about like his transition to post career life. Like he, he wants to be a very involved dad now because he knows that he wants to do that after he plays. Um, and, and they're very conscious about that. But he also loves to play. Um, he's playing at a high level. I think if I would guess, I would guess he'll be back for another year. But I think it's very much up in the air. Yeah, and that part, he's play- I'm amazed at the level uh, Brandon has played at. And I think the uh, the managing of the snap count really, really helps that part. But when he's on the field, he's been uh, so effective. Great story. And by yeah, the he's way, had games he's been- where he's dominated. Yeah, he's been unbelievable. Um, and, you know, Chip Kelly wanted to cut him for Travis Long. So never forget that. <laughs> it wasn't for That's the... Right for the ACL injury, but uh, funny how things work out. Um, This defense is a whole bow. Um, Boy, there's a lot of disconnect. I mean, it's, you know, and number two, the old way of looking at defense, uh, I agree. It's not necessarily the best way, but even in all the advanced numbers, uh, this is a top 10 defense. Um, They've just, they nearly set the sack record. Um, 17 games. 17 <clears throat> games, but all right, 68 through 16 is pretty good. So we, we can we can hang our hat on that. Um, Hassan Reddick, uh, another feather in the cap of, of, of Howie Roseman. TJ Edwards is one of the best stories in the NFL. I mean, that guy is one of the best linebackers in the NFL. Um I, I think if there was a Pro Bowl snub, it was him. He was named All Pro by Pro Football Focus. Uh, you mentioned the corners. You think, he was the, you think he was a bigger Pro Bowl snub than Javon Hargrave? Sorry, I do, I do, I do, because of the I consistency. I well, and plus, I think the down to down consistency. I think Javon's a great pass rusher. I don't think Javon's a great uh, run support player. I think you kind of see that. That's why it was so important to get. Draft Jordan Davis, get Linball Joseph in here. Um, so I think he's a great pass rusher. But anyway, I'm in a wormhole. You mentioned the cornerbacks, defense as a whole. Um, why do you think there's this disconnect with some of the fan base not realizing in, in this modern era, Bo, this is pretty good defense? Uh, because aesthetically, it's it's painful. Um <laughs> And when it's bad, it's bad, uh, right? Like there, you, when you when you're surrendering these 15 play drives, uh, and it's just this like slow drip, and you're continuing to give up third down conversions. That's annoying. You know, it's Philadelphia is all about aggression, and this is not an aggressive defense, which is a crazy thing to say about right, a defense yeah. that almost at the sack. 68. Record. Yeah. Um, I I just think <clears throat> I think everything they do philosophically is sound. Uh, I like I agree with the general philosophies that that Jonathan Gannon has. But I think that it's not like there are probably two or three really, really, really good like defenses in the league that are uh, good enough to affect good offenses. And I don't know that this defense is that good, but that's fine <clears throat> because if you're not that good, what can you do to change the game? Turn the ball over and get after the quarterback, affect the quarterback. And that's what they can do. Um, I also think that there are some things that Jonathan Gannon – does really well that we'll never see. Like if you just think about the guy, you, you just went through the, the lineup on defense. There's like every single player on the defense has had a better year than we expected. Yeah. Um, career years all over the place. Yeah, And there have been guys in terms of like young player development or getting guys ready to be on the field when they're thrown into situations, guys like Reed Blankenship, who has been really, really good. I think like better than he gets credit for. Even Josiah Scott, who has like made some high profile mistakes, has been better than you would have expected. Um, guys who get thrown into the mix have done well. Um, like the only player on the defense who has who has disappointed relative to expectations, I think, is probably Jordan Davis um, of the of the main players. And so 
I think Jonathan Gannon gets credit for that. Yeah. And however, don't much- say that too loud with John around here. He doesn't like when you point out that Jordan Davis is. No, I thought he I thought I think it's great when your guy gets benched for a. Uh, no, no, a no. Who's on the street well, in November? A, I think there's. Well, let me defend myself. A, I think there's there's a difference between pre-injury Jordan Davis and, and post-injury. I don't think he's come back from the from the ankle that well. And they obviously got Lindball, and Lindball does it better than he does at this stage as a veteran player. But I, I told Jody, Jody will tell you, it back in the draft, and I picked, I predicted the Eagles to trade up to get Jordan Davis. Um, I thought he was too esoteric a pick for um, Eagles fans. I really did because, he, <laughs> you know, he's the he's the the, the big Fangio nose tackle. In, in the variable front, and he was there to win on first and second down, and then they were going to take him out. He wasn't going to get sacks, and he wasn't going to get numbers, but he was going to have a big impact. Now, I'll say he hasn't had the impact I thought he was going to have, but he was starting to have it before he got hurt, and then the Eagles had to go in a different direction. Marvin Wilson couldn't handle it. Um, um, Milton uh, obviously can't handle it at his size. They had to bring in Linball, and Linball – just understands how to play that role better than Jordan Davis right now. I freely admit that, but I think Jordan Davis is too esoteric for Philadelphia. I think they're never going to get why he's there. And maybe they change the defense when JG leaves and then it's all blown up. But for this defense, you need that player, Bo Wolf. You need that big nose tackle. Then go, then sign him in free agency. Don't don't trade up to the thirteenth overall pick to get a guy who you need just for the body type, not for the player. Well, it's not the body type as Justin. well. I mean, body type's part of it. I mean, that's part of it. You got to be a big, strong guy. But you got to be good at it. It's not like you can get any three hundred fifty pounder who can do it. Like Linball was a, a pro bowler in his earlier days. He's really good at it. Yeah. Um, and he was sure. available. You could sign him for three million dollars and use your pick on something else or use your pick on something else and try to find a Travis Jones in the second round or somebody else who could potentially do that. Well, that's a, that's you know, a better, we, we need a, to look no further yeah. than Brandon Graham to say that, you know, yeah. we can't run a guy off after his rookie yeah. season. He's, you know, there's a long way to go for Jordan. The, Davis, the and there value, are only so the many value, people in the world who are his size yeah. and his athleticism. But from a resource allocation standpoint, you say yes. esoteric. I say that's a premium pick to use on a guy who's only going to be on the field on first and second down. If that's the if that's the plan for well, that's a better argument. I I can hear the resource allocation. I I that's why I said you know you see the mock drafts now. The Eagles taking a running back at number ten. I'm like yeah, get these out people here. don't first get, time. Yeah, yeah, uh, they don't get it. They don't understand how the Eagles do business. So the re- resource allocation argument I think is a good one, but I still doesn't think I still don't think that changes the fact that Eagles fans are never going to get the value of a player like that. There's just not. I, I argued that from day one. So that part, I agree with you. Okay. And I'll just argue his production and we'll see if his production. And there we go. Jay. And I know the Ends numbers are never, never going to match up, numbers. but um, yeah, I mean, I the thing is that when you use that premium of a pick, if he doesn't turn into an effective pass rusher, it's not a good pick. Um, yeah. That is a failure. That's just the case. We can define it right now. I'm calling him a failure. That's the standard. He's a failure because he's never going to be that player. He's he's not going to be Aaron Donald. He shouldn't be asked to be Aaron Donald. He doesn't have to be. be, Yeah, he doesn't have to be Aaron Donald. He's just, he's got, I think, you know, he has like a hundred something pass rush snaps this year and he hasn't hit the quarterback once. It's it's tough to rush from the nose, but, you know. Yeah, he's not even going to be Javon Hargrave as a pass rusher. I mean, Javon Hargrave is awesome. I know. Yeah. I know. All right. Well, we'll be Milton Williams. You know. Who will be the Jalen Hurts aside? And of course, his shoulder is going to decide a lot of it. But offense or defense, any other player other than Jalen Hurts who will be the star of the Eagles' victory next weekend against, we don't know yet, but uh, we're going to go ahead and pick the game anyway. Who is going to be the guy who steps up huge in addition to the quarterback to get the Eagles to the NFC Championship game? I think um, I think Dallas Goddard has looked really yeah, good. Yeah, he went to my man. All right. Bo and I are on the exact same page. I think he's looked really good uh, on low volume since returning. Like, you know, I thought in that Cowboys game, he only had three targets, right? 
but he looked awesome. Um, and the Cowboys are one of the better teams in the league against tight ends. Their other matchups potentially in this in this next round are not. Um, and I sort of think that like as good as A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith have been over the past month, we haven't had that breakout Dallas Goddard game of late. I could see that being part of the special game plan, you know, with the extra week. You do some self scouting like, ah, are we really taking as much advantage of this special player we have at tight end? I, I could see I could see that uh, that happening. Uh, at Bo underscore Wolf, read uh, Bo at the athletic.com backslash Billy. Uh, tremendous piece, as he mentioned, uh, spending uh, the day with Brandon Graham's wife in uh, while Brandon's playing on the field. Make sure you check that out. Um, the most important question of all, I'm going to end it here, Bo. Is Aaron Seapos going to be the punter in, in the playoffs? He's ready to go, man. He's, He's ready, ready to go. go. That was interesting, man. And yeah. he, he, you know, he he walked in to the locker room yesterday with uh, without the boot. And you would have thought from the way like all the reporters' heads turned that like you know the most beautiful woman in the world had just walked <laughs> by. I was like, oh my god, did you see that? It's Aaron Sipos. He's not wearing a boot. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And he was like willing to talk. He said yeah. he's, he's hoping to be back next week. He thinks he can do it. Um, and it was interesting. It was almost like publicly putting the pressure on that, like, I'm ready yeah, to go. You got to like, make a decision. See. I'm because, better than Brett Kern. Come on. Because Brett Kern, yeah, has not been very good. Um, He's been so a hell of a holder, I'm told, though. I think if I had to, you know, water gun to my foot, what, what my guess is, my guess is that he will not be ready for the divisional round, but he might be, he, he, he would be ready for the championship. That's game. exactly what I said. I expect Aaron C. Paz for the NFC championship game. That's my prediction. Order weapon. gun to my foot. That's what I'm going to have to use. And I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to have to look up cromulent. That one whoosh, went right over my head. Uh, Bo, great stuff. Appreciate you coming on board, buddy. We'd love to get you on, uh, depending on how long. I'm going to get you that golden goes. title when uh, WrestleMania comes mm. to Philadelphia. I'll take that. He'll take a belt. Uh, Bo, thanks much. Appreciate thanks, it guys. greatly. Thanks, From the bro. Athletic, Bo Wolf here with us on Birds 365. All right, timeout's <laughs> got to be quick because we got to come back. Put a bow on the show. Stay with us. Go for the beers, go for the cheers.